And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. And with me, I have a newcomer into the temple. A fellow, re a fellow resident of the land of ten thousand lakes, and the and the fish new opener being a state holiday, <laughs> as well as well as the as well as the as well as well as the person responsible for for Aces Wild, as well as the as well as the many projects under the Culture Attack name, the one and only Terra Ray, hi, who's currently in a winter wonderland. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I love the snow, so I'm glad we're finally getting it. It poured rain on Christmas, which was wild. So, mm -hmm. oh. I'm glad we're getting snow. Everybody looks at snow as a royal pain. I look at it and I go, "Hey, free ammo." <laughs> whether, whether it be for throwing snowballs or set, or fill, or filling lunch trays with them and and setting them around my roommate's bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought it was a fun, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I told I told him I, I told him I was gonna get back, and it was more revenge for one for one prank he did on me because prank because, um, the first rule about prank war is what is when you come in you have you have to prank. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> oh. I don't think I'd survive prank war. <laughs> Every, everybody says that, and then and that, and then they they learn the they learn the hard or, or easy way that they that they have a bit of creativity to to do it they just need the right push sure uh, you know it's like it's like how madness is like gravity but now of course of course my first introduction to your work was it was aces wild all the, all those years ago um which is why which is why I ended up be, why I ended up being a surprise to me when I found out when I found out you were the one responsible for that, so oh. what what would you say was the game or or instance or incident, whichever you prefer, that got you interested in wanting to pursue um, game design? Well, like many of us, grew up playing games, um, and I remember the exact instance. I had a friend Heather in school. We were in art school together. And she's like, what are you going to do with your degree? I don't know. And I was like, yeah, I don't know either. I always wanted to make games, but it just felt like like more of a dream. I didn't really know how to get started. And she's like, well, why don't we just like learn to go do that? And I was like, you know what? <laughs> and so I did. I just taught myself the program. And I worked on this like RPG Maker game for a bit that I thought it'd be easier to do like an RPG Maker game, but my heart wasn't really in it. Um, and then I just followed some tutorials online to learn to program mm -hmm. using XNA, and um, then I made it as wild. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, I remember around that time there was a massive push that Microsoft was doing with the XNA program to get um, as many indie developers on, on board as they could. That was around the same time I found out about Dust, mm -hmm. which I'd, I'd say was one of the big success stories of that program. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah, it was great because they had tons of tutorials out. Um, I tried running Aces Wild on an Xbox, couldn't get it to work. I thought I had optimized it, but it never ran. So. <laughs> well, but, um, it was still a great, a great framework, and I learned a lot. Are you familiar with the programmer's drinking song? Um, uh, I may have heard it before, but I don't know. 99 little bugs in the code, 99 bugs in the code. You take one down, you patch it around, 287 bugs in the code. Great, right, yes, yes, I've heard that. It's funny. Yeah, I know I know it's I know it's one of those uh, one of those obvious ones, but just because it's obvious doesn't mean it's not true. So true, yeah. <laughs> it do and, be that way. Well, true well truth is the greatest form of comedy. Yeah, I agree. But and Aces Aces Wild was an interesting beast, you know. Be, being, I'd I'd say I'd say an I'd say um an early attempt at at something that I've 
seen plenty of people try and try and do with with mixed results, and that is character action, but two D. Even sure. if Aces Wild is a is a beat 'em up, it is kind of straddling that line. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh. because, and I'm I mainly I mainly say that because a beat 'em up is going to be is largely going to be more about survival and ex and exploiting, um, every every little every little detail, whereas a character action is going to it's not just enough to beat the opponents. You have to do it while looking good in the process. Sure. <laughs> So, I'm get, but I'm but I I know that there's been a few projects you've you've di you've dipped into. Uh -huh. But it does it does seem that character action is where you've been where you've been leaning towards. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what what would you, what would you say is what would you say is the appeal of that style if you had to distill it? I hmm. <laughs> I guess and it's interesting that I really do love character action games but like you said it's about like doing it in like a really cool way like being stylish mm -hmm. and ironically like that's kind of the thing I don't like I try and make my games look good but um, I almost take more inspiration from like STGs like scoring mechanics and things like that um STG. So I kind of, yeah, like shooting, like shoot 'em ups, ah. and um, I so I sort of focus in like on the mechanics part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the appeal for me. Like I think of like Bayonetta or God Hand, mm -hmm. and like the flashy stuff's fun, but like like I like Nero over Dante if that makes sense. Um, he has more like a well-rounded kit that's fun to use, and I don't know. There is an appeal, though, like mm -hmm. in like being stylish and stuff like that. But the yeah. appeal for me for making it is just fighting's really fun for me, and I just want to make it really interesting. So that's yeah. what I try to do. And I can, I can, I can certainly, I can certainly see that. And <laughs> just me, and since you brought up God Hand, I'm, I, I would be remiss if I didn't, if I didn't say, watch your head for falling pots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And tr truth be truth be told, I think the I think the developers of Go of of God Hand should be get, should be giving IGN a, a um, fruit basket. Oh sure, because <laughs> I because I think that shitty review they did all those years ago um, did more to help the game than anything else. Yeah, it might have. Um, of course, I'd say this. I'd say the same thing about game trailers who fo who focused way too who focused way too much on on one throwaway line with Gene calling the. Calling that Power Rangers XP a bunch of douchebags. <laughs> I guess I hadn't read that one or watched it. Oh, I I had I had watched that because I was on game trailers quite a bit because even back then I was an I was an information addict. Oh sure. <laughs> it's funny I had never watched any of their stuff until about a week ago. It's yeah. kind of funny that you bring that up, but kind of in love with Kyle Bossman. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I think I think game trailers managed to come back better than X Play did. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. And well, the funny the funny thing is, I had when when I heard that X Play was coming back, I had said that it it could work, but you need but you need to do more than just be a glorified throwback. Sure. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's exactly what they that's exactly what they did. They didn't they didn't think they didn't think they didn't think about the fact that they needed to be be more than just hey guys remember remember x play right um, you know you know find a i know i know a lot of people were like this was going to be do this is going to be doomed from the start and i thought you have you have some strong personalities there you could at least you could leverage that but it would require planning and well i think a lot of people who were involved with that wanted um had the cart before the horse yeah, for sure. But it probably wouldn't when it, since you brought up your your preference towards narrow, it there's one thing that I always find amusing that some people find incredulous. And that was that um I think it was it was either Itsuno or somebody else who had said that 
the Devil Bringer concepts in 4, in DMC4, was something that they couldn't do on the PS2 hardware. And a lot, a lot of people, th a lot of people have said that that's ridiculous because it's just a grapple. And I'm like, it is a, it is a grapple with a unique animation for ev, with two, unique animations for every enemy type at the least. Yeah, and I think just loading in the assets maybe could have been an issue, like all the little animations, um, mm -hmm. like the 3D model for like the actual like demon hand and stuff. Um, there's... Yeah, and I've never developed on the PS2, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. know for sure. Um, I've, I've had, I've done, I've done my re I've done my research when it came, when it comes to the structure. Um, as far as how easy it is, it it ultimately depends on what game you're dealing with. For platformers and the like, it was ridiculously easy to do. For shooters, a little bit less so. Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason why most why most developers who are doing shooters migrated over to the Xbox inst mm -hmm. instead. And truth be told, the P the console consoles will ne will never be as good at shooters as PC well is. Sure. Like the amount the especially especially like arena shooters, you know, where you have high amounts of movement and high amounts of precision needed. You're not going to be able to do that with a console. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it was the the console version of Half Life had a lock on button. <laughs> right. But I can I can see I can see the mindset with um, shooters because it's there's far less there's far less barrier when it comes there's far less of a barrier when it comes to understanding mechanics. If that if that makes sense. Oh yeah, no, it makes tons of sense. Mm -hmm. um, were the, and speaking of that, were there any sh were there any particular shooters in mind that you drew influence from more than others? Um, probably Esp Galuda. I mean, I kind of had this, you know, in the game as well. Specifically, like there's a mechanic where the game just gets harder basically as you get stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of an idea before. I had done much research for the game when I when it was just sort of like a spark in my head, um, but the scoring mechanics and the push and pull of Espaluda was like, and if you're not familiar, you can like slow down time with this like meter. It's a shooting game, and mm -hmm. once it runs out, you can keep it going, and it makes you stronger. And then once it runs out, like the bullets actually like speed up. Yeah. Um, so you lean more you lean more into the, into a preference for bullet hell. Because Espeluda was more or less that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but and it, well, I do. Yeah, I I love manic shooters, mm -hmm. bullet hell. But I just love their scoring mechanics, and I love that push and pull. And yeah. I like that STGs are like have this really basic concept. You know, like some of the oldest games, if not the oldest game, mm -hmm. is like you know shoot them up, and they use that as sort of like their canvas, and then they just like paint new mechanics on top of it. Yeah. And I kind of like to think I do that with character action games and action mm -hmm. RPGs. So, since since that's a genre that um, is a, is its own is its own rabbit hole, I'd like to play a little bit of word of word association. Okay, just to, just... <laughs> I'm sure I've ever done this. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm gonna give you a few titles and and you can tell me if you were familiar with them. If it's if it's if it's one that it. One that was less so, if you had if you had delved into it and what experience is there, you know, it's like it's like a Rorschach test, but the geekiest Rorschach test you'll ever do. It probably is. Let's go. <laughs> um, the Castle of Shikigami. I played it. What's it on? What system is it on? Um, it's been it's been on P it's been on PS2. It's been on um three it's been on 360. It's had multiple en entries over the years. I can't quite put the game to the name, unfortunately. Oh. I've played it, but I just I can't think of what yeah. game that is. Castle Shikigami or Shikigami no Shiro. Um, it, um, in some regions, it was called Mo it was called Mobile Light Force for some reason. No, <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I definitely played. I just I can't even think of like what the art's like or anything, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, Ether Vapor. Another one I played. <laughs> is that like a re is that one? What's that on? Is it like PC? Is that an indie game or is that like? Yeah, it was. New? It first it first made its name in the do in the Dojin gaming scene. That's like the super over the top. There's like tons of like missiles and stuff, right? Is it that one? That's why it's like um, called Ether Reaper. Am I right? <laughs> you're you're close. It is in that vein, but the big the um big selling point with it was that was being able to switch between three modes one one where you're doing gatling one where you're doing this um wide shot and one where you're doing missiles the cool. the team behind it would eventually do a successor in the form of astabreed which is similar sure. but also adds swords right yeah um yeah i think i remember i didn't get to play it but i did i remember trying to download it and couldn't get it to work <laughs> And I think it was pay too, but I think I was trying to pirate it, unfortunately. <laughs> but <laughs> couldn't get it to work. They did they did eventually make a remaster a few a few years ago. Yeah, I think that was part of the issue too, because it was like I couldn't navigate like the Japanese site to like pay for it. I do think it was pay at the time when I looked for it, but mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that remaster is available on Steam. Oh, um, well I should try it. Let's see. Um, Soul Divide. I hate that I'm saying the same thing. I have played it. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm falling on my face here. I can't remember what that one's like. Yeah, that was basically do basically doing the doing the rail shooter approach, just um, going fantasy instead of SF. All right. You know, going f going full sword and sorcery to the point where if you looked at the cover. It would look like it would look more like Golden Axe than than anything else. Right. Oh yeah, I definitely have that. Like yeah, it's like painterly, like the the poster art in my head. Mm -hmm. I remember not liking it. I don't know if I would have changed my mind if I played it right now, but yeah. that's all I remember about it. Um, Ikaruga. I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> No, nobody, nobody gets canceled in my temple. That's not overrated. Maybe like not overrated. It's one of those games that's like, you know, it gets lauded for its like its elegance, which it definitely has. It's like such a cool mechanic. But every time I go back to play it, I just I don't have that much fun. I'd rather play something else. Mm -hmm. So not overrated, but um, you know, great music, great art, one yeah. of the most you know go to, quote unquote, like elegant mechanics. Um, and it is, it is so cool, but, um, I will, I will admit I preferred th that particular mode mechanic. I preferred how it was in Outland, which is do, which is doing that same, fi um, switching between modes just in more of a Metroidvania. Oh, sure. Cool. Um, If you so, if yeah. you hadn't if you hadn't gotten this one at at the time I don't I don't blame you because it was hard to find but Einhander. Um, I am pointing to my Einhander on my shelf. Yes, it's <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, I mean it's so good. It it's good it's good, but it's I I will throw I will whenever somebody tries to wag the finger at me about em, about emulation. Or 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 going on the high seas, I will point to the cost of that game and 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 say I want you to defend this. <laughs> How much is it right now? I didn't think that was a high one. I mean, maybe that was a little, but even when I was start even when I was starting out with game collecting, it was it was a high it was a um a high cost. But let let me t let me take a look. Yeah, let's see. And um wa and watch my soul um slowly die. Yeah, it isn't because it's awesome. It's so, so good. I mean, there is a sp the, on Amazon three hundred and fifty three. Hey, I, I thought me when you said hi, that's kind of what I thought. I didn't think it was that. Um, I get it. It's good. <laughs> there, I see. I see one from Retro V Games for like for like two hundred for over two hundred. Mm -hmm. Um, the the. The only way to get there's some import versions that are somewhat cheaper, but that but they're all eBay entries, so you are right. gambling there. For sure, yeah. But um, a lot of the ones that I'm finding are not are not going to come easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Um, but this this one's a bit this one's a bit um a bit tricky on the entry. But any any games in the in the in the um ride and series. I don't love them. I the association is with this bowling alley in my hometown. Mm-hmm. Um. And I just remember watching the intro, like watching like the Harrier Jets, like that intro. I forget which one it is, mm-hmm. um, where it has that sort of like pre-rendered cutscene. And mm-hmm. um, I just remember they look like really fun. And then I play them, and it's like so sluggish and like surprisingly hard. And I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Raptor, Call yeah. of the Shadows. Say it again. Raptor, Call of the Shadows. That's a shooting game. It's yeah. A shoot-em-up. Uh, that's one I haven't heard of. It's the first one I think I haven't heard. Of. That one, that one, I can un- I can understand not hearing of that one because that because that one was, um, night was nineties PC. Oh, cool. Um, it's re it it got a re- it got a remake of sorts in twenty fifteen that I was glad for because it meant I could play it without having to use DOSBox. Say the name again. Um, Raptor Call of the Shadows. And it's it along with Tyrion are considered some of the high water marks when it comes to the when it comes to these sorts of shooters on PC. Can you do you get money at the end of the stage and then like you upgrade? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I played this. <laughs> yeah, both that one and Tyrion operated on that on that kind of money system. They um, so in Wyoming, my home state. Mm-hmm. Um, we have this, I don't know if we have them here, but they're called Hastings. They're out of business now, mm-hmm. but they were kind of like a, um, a Barnes and Noble and, mm-hmm. but they had like more like games and movies and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, they had that on a PC, like for, you know, to free play. Um, I would walk there from my house and go play that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, more, more recently I ended up, di- I, I've, so I've sung the praises of Drifting Lands, which which basically went, what if we did the shmup thing, but with Diablo? <laughs> like do like do the shmup thing, but with Diablo style loot, and right. and and everybody else was like, yeah l- yeah let's do that because some because some ideas are crazy enough to act like that. Right. Um, I hadn't heard of this one. It mm-hmm. looks cool, but yeah, hadn't heard of it. If uh, if I'm not the biggest fan of Game of Thrones, but I, but there's one line I I find myself continually using, and that is that's what I do. I drink and I know things. <laughs> <laughs> but when it, also when it when it comes to character action in the form of something like Devil May Cry, would it surprise you at all if I if I say that I lean more towards Vir, Virgil than um, Nero or Dante? Um, it's not a surprise. I think, <laughs> from what I know of you, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I know some people would say that just because of my profile art, but truth, but truth be told, the reason I was I lean towards that is I'm I'm a big fan of the artwork of Ayami Kojima, mm-hmm. who was pretty was pretty much the girl do who was pretty much the girl when it came to art for Castlevania. F- um, for years, sure. Um, make, making her name with Symphony of the Night and just be and just being the um, de- the default look. Yeah, and like being untouchable in her talent, like she's super good. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. because um, she's very. It's it's up there where where a, a lot of game a lot of franchises have concept art that the technology. Could could not replicate. Sure. Um, like look at if you've probably seen some of Yoshitaka Amano's um, concept art that he's done for like fi- like he's done for like Final Fantasy or Gwyn Saga, or sure. e- or even Gatchaman. And the amount of detail in that is something that even with modern tech we'd still have trouble with. Oh, definitely. Like. Everybody forgets this, but the reason why Nomura's st- style ended up ha- ended up having more of more of a presence was his style would would be easier to work with with um 3D tech. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Mostly because because it's it's not a, it's not as detailed. And I know I know everybody makes jokes about the buttons and zippers and all that, but relatively speaking, it's less detailed. Yeah, well, and you can just texture that stuff in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whereas with a monozard, it's not far removed from an ukiyo-e painting in terms of all of the amounts of detail or some of the, or some of the um, some of the paint st painterly styles that you'd see in the Middle East or even the. I'm not. I've I've never nailed down as exactly where his major influence was because it's one because some artists will um can well change the story depending on who's asking. Sure. <laughs> but I do think, and when it, and if if I have to use a recent example of this con of this idea of the the um, concept art is something that the game can't can't replicate. Um, I've grown f I've grown fond of the um, anima pr um, role playing games and video games um, uh -huh. that, are, that have come out of Spain. And their principal artist is Wen Yu Li, who I first found out on DeviantArt when he was Wen M. Uh -huh. And his art style is very, very um, detailed. And mm -hmm. just, for, just for the sake of reference, I'll send you a link to his totally, old yeah. gallery. He does, update it. he does update it there from time to time, but nowhere near as much as he used to. Oh, cool. And... Yeah, you can see his. It would be very difficult to do his style in three D. Like e even if you even if you had triple A levels of money, it would still be difficult to do just because of all the details in it. Sure. Uh -huh. But. Th but ev even. Awesome. But e even with that, the other I will admit the other annoying thing that pe that I've, that people have assumed when it comes to the um, art that I've had set up is assuming assuming the ice motif came from El came from Frozen. <laughs> I've s that was never the intent. I don't even I find that movie to be overrated. Sure. Um. Not just because I got sick of that "Let It Go" song, but be but most mostly mm -hmm. because the whole idea of "Hey, let let's let's make fun of fairy tale tropes." I just find uninteresting. Sure. Because it's it's low hanging fruit. Like everybody knows that the tropes and that the tropes in certain fairy tales are ridiculous. You're not saying anything unique with that. <laughs> gotcha. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, I think Anna's cute. That's why I like it. <laughs> yeah. But the the bigger inspiration was the went was the Winter Carnival. You know, the and just the crazy stuff I've seen sculptors do with a block of ice. Oh, I'm sure. Especially since around I think it was in the mid 2000s I was in the um ice palace the last time that they did it, which is a literal ice castle. Where was that? That was that was here that was here in Minnesota. That was during the that was during the Winter Carnival. I think in I want to say either two thousand four two thousand seven. Do oh, not dang. quote me on that. Oh yeah, that's cool. They did it because around that time the NHL All Star Game was going to be at the was going to be at the Excel Center. Oh, that's cool. So I, that sounds cool though. Mm -hmm. Is that a pun? Yes. <laughs> But the it is fun. It is um. Now, as, now as I understand, as I understand it, one of the current projects you're working on is Our Dreams United, which, if I'm not mis if I'm, which when I when I look at some of the um clips that you've sh that you've shown on social media, the vibe I get is is it trying to be some sort of some sort of um. Some sort of turn-based action. Kinda. I, to me, maybe the, I'm alone in this, but um, it was always sort of a dream. That's a big word, but like a a goal at least to. I feel like turn-based games have a lot more drama to them than 
like character action games do. Like, you know, even some of like more dramatic games like Bayonetta or like Dark Souls, you know, they have some pretty dramatic boss fights. But I feel like there's tons of drama when there's like turn based combat. You're kind of forced to deal with like what the, you know, the enemy does to you. Um, and so when Final Fantasy VII Remake came out, I was like, oh my God, like they nailed it so good. Um, Which is funny because for. For the last few years, I've had I've had to deal with no end of people um, acting like going like Final Fantasy leaning into action is some betrayal. When in my own research, I've learned that that's not exactly the case. Because I don't think it's a betrayal. I fudge and love that game. <laughs> well, putting putting aside the fact that a lot of people are trying to assign quote unquote roots to FF when it's never really had them in the sense that other franchises have. Right. No, I agree. I mean, look look at the transition of how of how gameplay works from like one to two. Yeah, no, it's way different. Um, the as op- as opposed to something like say dr- something like say Dragon Quest, which has been very conservative for all for um many many years. I'd say same game, and we love it every time. <laughs> I'd say the hell it didn't it didn't start adopting classes until until like it's. I want, I want to say it was around five that they started adopting classes, even though they didn't call it that. They called it vocations, but lipstick on a pig. <laughs> right. You can put whatever shade of lipstick on that pig you want, but it's still a pig. Right, right. But the thing, there's one particular story that I, ca- I came across from an interview back in 2011 that is very telling. Um. Are you familiar with the name Hiroyuki Ito? I'd have to be reminded. I've heard it. I feel like I've even heard it recently in a talk or something. But Ito is one of the unsung heroes with Final Fantasy. Things like the ATB system, that was his idea. The job system, that was also his idea. Uh, and he is one of the longest tenured people still working in that company. Sure, yeah. No, you're... I, I'm and... recalling who they are, yeah. In 2011, he did an interview with One Up, which has sadly been lo- been lost to the archives. That's the only way to get it now. Mm. Where he talked he talked about how about his experiences trying to develop the ATB system for Final Fantasy IV, mm-hmm. and he he had said that his two big inspirations was American football and <laughs> Formula One. Right. And this was right around the time that Formula One was. Shit was um, mo- was transitioning to automatic transmission, which may not sound like much of a change, but when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with for- with formula style vehicles, that was a massive, not to put too fine a point on it, shift. Sure. <laughs> and he had said that he saw things moving in a more in a more action based, no matter what. And the ATB system was his means of moving that along with the technology he had at the time. Right. So, in a roundabout way, you could say that the shift to action was already was was going to be in the cards decades in advance. And the fact that he had that mindset in the mid '90s is quite telling. Sure. That and that and Sakaguchi had al- had always instilled anybody anybody who was taking the mantle that, um, FF that FF can be just about anything, ev- even something that isn't an RPG in in his mind. Right. Which is which is why it's kind of funny when I when I see people try and argue what it's supposed to be, whether it be for Seven Remake, or um Sixteen. Right, right, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I know. I mean, I think that's what's so great about them. Like each one, even if they stumble a bit, it's always something cool. And there's always lots to learn. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's cool. Like with eight or thirteen, it's like they're kind of wild. But yeah, and th- I do credit I do credit thirteen with forcing me to step up my game in terms of how I looked at mechanics. Sure. Especially when um, it was around that time I was subscribed to Game Developer Monthly. Uh-huh. I don't remember why I was subscribed to it, but <laughs> I think it was a case of my in, my information addiction and 
the fact that the fact that I'm somehow a better journalist than some people who are tenured some tenured games journalists, and I never even studied journalism, so make of that what you will. But sure, there was a postmortem on thirteen, and one of the things that was stated was that they learned the hard way that the way that they had been developing games up until that point was no longer going to work with HD platforms. Sure. Because up until that point, they had arranged their studios into a bunch of little fiefdoms. You know, you've got a you've got a separate group for writing. You've got a separate group for the battle system. You've got a separate group for overworld. You've got a separate group for art design and UI design, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. But with the advent of HD, it meant needing more people in each of those divisions, and the lines of communication were not at, were not as quick as they were, mm -hmm. and and things got bloated. And it was, and the idea of the vertical slice, as we all know it, that wasn't really a thing in Japanese development. Sure. And it wasn't until they, it wasn't until they put out the demo as part of Advent Children Complete that things finally started to take shape. Which makes sense if you look at that initial teaser versus what FF13 came, um, came to be. Right. Like it's it seemed ve it seemed very actiony, and of course there was also the fact that right around the, the same time that they were developing it, they were developing their brand new. At the time, it was called the White Engine, but then it was renamed Crystal Tools, and now it's the Luminous Engine. You know, so spinning plates. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. And. Even th even though I haven't dived into coding myself, I've done I've done enough research to to know that sometimes it can be pain, and in yeah. the worst cases, it's like disassembling a bomb. <laughs> you know, just yeah, pretty much. just one li one little line is off, and then the whole thing doesn't work. Yeah, pretty much, and especially with big games, even just having a couple of people, it's like. It's so much easier if it's just you. <laughs> like, you know, obviously you don't have the scale of a game that you can make, but mm -hmm. you just know where everything is, you know how everything works. And I've often I've work. often said that whether it be game development, whether it be film, you you need you need that one person who I've who I've co I've collectively called the guy. Now, sure. sometimes the guy is not a guy, but I'm just I'm just using that as a catch-all. Right. That yeah, one good. person who ev who the buck stops with on everything. They 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 are keeping an eye on every little detail on how on how things are. They have a certain vision, and everybody else, it's their job to help make that vision come to life. Sure. Um. Sometimes the guy is a bit of an asshole, but a lot. But more often than not, it's an asshole with um a purpose. Sure. I mean, I mean, hell, I've. That's that's often why I've said that I I do think a lot of people who who are, who haven't it should um try being it try being a GM at least once because <laughs> that for and for any sort of TTRPG because it gives it because that's a that's a really easy way for people to learn how people to learn the easy or the hard way how easy and hard it is to be the guy right yeah um, I was not good at it. <laughs> I think I'm all right at it, but I don't. I don't like having to crack the whip. But but um, everybody knows that I will if I have to. Sure. But when it comes to turn, mm. when it comes to turn base, and I know, I know for a lot of people, they there's this whole debate about whether it's better to do real time or turn based. Um, which I f I find that I find the question of which is better to be kind of silly, but. I will say that there are significantly more opportunities in tur in turn based than there than there can be in real time, if that makes sense. I think so. Can you elaborate? Well, I think so, I think it com it comes down to the to the available options, the available tactics that you can utilize because you don't have to worry you don't have to worry about um the you don't have to worry as much about the time factor sure oh 
And but I I will I will state that I th I think the way to the way to go forward for turn based is not to just re not to just replicate say Dragon Quest four and be, and be done with it or those early generation RPG maker games that more or less were doing Dragon Quest wannabes. Sure. The the best of the approach is by introducing mechanics that you couldn't do in a real time affair. Like say some like say some of the break mechanics that you see in Octopath Traveler, for instance. Sure. Uh, or th or things like the Judgment Ring in, in um, Shadow Hearts. Sure. I might contend to say I think you could get those in action games, but I do think we can still be in agreement that I think it does a lot or can do a lot for mm -hmm. like turn based stuff. Like I, the break might have might not have been the best example because obviously seven remake and sixteen have st have um stagger. Great. But the point the point is 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 that I th is that I th I think the best way to for that for that style to continue on is is to emphasize that it's a style you're do you're doing it in this manner because that's what you want to do not because that's what's expected. Sure. Yeah. Of course. I think that's. Great advice for any artist or game dev. Honestly. And I think an excellent case in point with that is the is the rise of what's been unfortunately named the boomer shooter over the over the last five years. <laughs> you know, whether whether it be dusk, whether it be a medieval, whether it be almost almost anything coming out of New Blood or tur or Turbo Overkill or even Bolt Gun, <laughs> they are. They are definitely throwbacks to the first-person shooters of the '90s. However, they're do. However, it's very clear that w that it's not a throwback for its own sake. They're doing things that are unique to them that you couldn't have done back in the day. Right. Oh. And it's it's that whole thing of you're you're doing this because you're leaning into a style. Um. Like I, I really enjoy Ultra Kill, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm, and that game has a lot of that texture warping you'd see in like PS1 graphics. Sure. But you're not going to confuse that with a shooter that came out around that same time. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of what I mean by leaning into a um a style, especially since we here in the temple have a, have a saying about about not wanting what we call design by gospel. Sure. And the the idea of doing things a certain way because that's how it's always been done. Right. That, I remember when Lords of Shadow came out and a lot of people were were like what were like it's too lit it's too linear. And because they were comparing it to Symphony of the Night or or similar games. Right. Except Mercury Steam had no had no intention or interest in doing a Metroidvania approach. They outright admitted that their inspiration was Super Castlevania Four. Right. So, it's kind. Of, it it always felt like it was unfair to to um to put it against a standard it had no intention of meeting in the first place. Yeah. It's true, and like franchises are tough because people have expectations and. Mm-hmm. Somebody in the night's really good. <laughs> yeah, and really. <laughs> It is, but I I resent the idea that that's what you have to do, just be just yeah, because just totally. because of tradition. And whenever it whenever the tradition argument comes up, I will always bring up the state of um, racing games these days. Okay. Especially especially the high production ends of things. Everybody is tr everybody is trying so hard to pull to pull the realism card out of their ass. And because of that, so many so many games look exactly the same. Yeah. If, if I showed you if I showed you a picture of R Factor Two, Assetto Corsa, and um, F One, I'm fairly certain you couldn't tell the difference. Probably not. <laughs> even even if it even if it, I get the vibe that's not that's not a genre you're at, you're as um, familiar with, but just but just from a eyeball test. 
if I if I were to do the same thing with say um with say rail shooters, you'd be able to tell the difference. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Both both True. in gameplay and and in aesthetic. Um, like each of the ones I mentioned in that in that little Rorschach test, they are very different from each other. Yeah. And the the I remember there was a bit of a controversy when Need for Speed Unbound came out because it decided to do a bit of this cell shading graffiti like um, style. Uh huh. And I was like, this wouldn't. And I I had said. Some of the some of you people had grown up with Jet Moto, with Kirby's Air Ride, with with um F, with F Zero GX, but this is crossing the line. Right. <laughs> it's be, it's because since since there's very little in the way of competition, ever there's the mindset of we need to we need to look like everything else for in the name of being a realistic simulation. Yeah. The only game that's going to come close to being a realistic simulation that's actually used by actual drivers is iRacing, and, well, you know how people give certain companies a lot of shit for microtransactions? I do know this, yeah. Um, it's even wor- it, is, it is even worse in, the, in um, a lot of racing games, especially iRacing. Right, like, yeah. Every single car and tr- and track as its own MTX to the point where just getting a decent spread is going to run you like 200. Jeez. It, they might have they might have da- they might have dialed it back but th- but I remember just how ridiculous it was. Mm-hmm. And when it com- and that that's that's one of the things I always I always um remind people of when it comes to how Expect how expectations can create problems. Yeah, is due to due to the fact that it, that that ev- that everybody's so hyper focused on the realism um, argument, you end up with ge- with games that focus that focus so that focus so much on that to the detriment of everything else. Oh, um, yeah. The analogy I use is is. Back in 2017, when Project Cars 2 came out, every ra- every racing game pundit was making a big deal about the game being able to host private lobbies. The thing that's been standard since since 2001. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that that's obviously an extreme example, but I think you get get the idea. Get the idea. You know. Yeah. No. Definitely. The bare minimum shouldn't shouldn't be shouldn't be treated with that level of praise, right? Um, but moving moving past that, I do I do recall also you you um diving into the guilty gear rabbit hole. Uh huh. Um, and I'm curious where where you start where you started with that. Was it with um was it with like X? Was it with like um like like um third sign? Where where did you start? Where did you start on that? Um, I've since the beginning. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I was like a huge fan on. So, are um, we talking beginning as in, as in the original Guilty Gear? Yeah, Missing Link. Um, mm-hmm. and you know I wasn't like necessarily like a huge fan there, but I was a huge fighting game player. I still am. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Reload Online came out, um, so there was like this Korean version of Reload. Mm-hmm. And some very great programmers made an online version of it. Um, and there was a strong community there for a few years, like around 2006, 7, 8, 9. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe not quite that long, but um, a bunch of us got into Guilty Gear and got to play online. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, still my favorite game. Well, Xrd is my favorite, but yeah, I love Guilty Gear. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed it, although I will admit, I, I wasn't a... I... The bloom, fe- the bloom fell off the rose a little bit quick with Strive. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> I played the demo and then haven't played it since. Uh, I think, I think the aside, aside from, aside from some of the poses just looking weird, looking at you, Kai Kisk. Uh, I think the, I think the reason, and maybe you had a different reason, but for me, the, the issue that the issue that I had with um, st- with Strive 
was that was that I felt like it oh, it um overcorrected when it came to its mechanics. And the lack of instant the lack of instant kill made me go, why did you take that out? <laughs> That's as that's as dumb as having a Mortal Kombat game without fatalities. Um, I guess I might not, on that one point, be in agreement. Um, but um, I, the way I see it, this is really harsh, but I stand by it. Um, We're no stranger to, har to harsh takes here. That's half, that's half of our stock and trade. <laughs> I feel like they aimed low and nailed it. I think they. You know, a lot of people give it, like, all this praise for, like, how how tight the characters are. Um, you know, just stuff that you would typically associate, like, with a good fighting game. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, they, they've done that with their games for a long time. Only now there's, like, less to do in the game. And so it's just... Less to do... Know. Try Trying to... Trying to... Um, it's... <sighs> There seem there seems to be this added there seems to be this attitude amongst among certain parts of what I've called fetishizing simplicity. Oh yeah, exactly. That's why I called Ikaruga overrated. <laughs> uh, this i this idea of this idea of uh, more complex mechanics are are bad in the devil, and no matter no matter what no matter what the context, and simple mechanics are good. I see this a lot in the TTRPG space. Mm. Uh, we need we need to get rid of we need to get rid of all this all this unnecessary crunch, and then they end up house ruling a bunch of a bunch of new crunch into the game, and I'm like, what the fuck was the point? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you tr it's it's like it's like saying it's like saying you um you you get you get shit on by a pigeon, so you so you decide to wear it, so you decide to wear a hel it decide to wear a helmet, except the helmet's right. made of paper. You didn't fix a problem. You just traded it with a new one, right? Yeah, yeah. Strive is a huge letdown for me. I mean, it's gorgeous. The art's cool. I like the redesigns, but um... but, and I I know that I know that for some there's going to be that romanticism about um about about the about again simplicity, mm -hmm. but. The for me the the appeal of of what would be considered anime or dojin fighters is the myriad mechanics. Sure. And with with strive the the fact that the fact that there was so that there was this double this double down on just on just um on just tension. Mm -hmm. Kind kind of bug kind of bug me. How the I know I I know I um I know I made my joke about the about the lack of the the lack of instant kills, but I'd I'd say the lack of th of things like burst. Uh, in the in the in the way that it was presented and things things like wa things like wall break I never I saw as more spectacle than anything than anything actually necessary. Yeah, it's it's whack. I hate it. <laughs> it. It's so streamlined that every match plays out really similarly. It's not even fun to watch. Um, I think that's a huge mark against it too. Um, mm -hmm. There's just not much design space. A lot of the characters play the same way because there's not much design space. Um, and I... you know they look cool and they have like a little bit of their own flavor while you're controlling them, but everyone is kind of the same in my mind. For me, there was also the issue of a lot, a lot of the newcomers um, not having that same heavy metal background. Sure. Because if you look at Guilty Gear, the the vast majority of characters are some kind are some kind of have some kind of rock or metal reference. Sure. Um, like Soul Bad Guy, that's a bit that's a bit of a nod to Freddie Mercury's solo album Mr. Bad Guy. Mm. Um, one one of it, the instant kill he had for the longest time, um, Napalm Death. That's the name of a of a British grindcore band. Great. Um, Kai Kisk is obviously is obviously named after Michael Kisk, the the um front the front man for Halloween and and Gamma Ray and God knows how many other solo projects. Right. right. Um. And of course, of course, of course, Eno is what is one giant reference to. 
um, to a lot to a lot of the er, a lot of the visual K aesthetics of of the '90s, even having a little bit of nod to X Japan with Kuranai. But what is what is, where is exact where is the metal influence when it comes to Nago Ryukyu, for for example? I don't know. I think it's cool though. <laughs> but it's, it's... I, I, I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. I can see that being. I think he's really cool though. But yeah, I can see that as well. Yeah, it's it's one of it's one of those things that. And that ends up bu ends up bugging me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because because w one of the bit one of the big appeals to to me when it came to Guilty Gear was was this influence of of um, fighting and metal. Sure. Um. Oh yeah, I get it. Like, there's plenty of games. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but like, you know, one little thing changed. It's like I hate this thing now. <laughs> like to me, that was like the heart of it, and now it's gone. What I what I see out of that is Ishiwatari not not quite understand not quite understanding his the appeal of his work, um, and when when it comes to that simplicity, I think it's I think it's quite telling that outside of Strive, that ju that jump towards simplicity hasn't really taken hold. I mean, I def I definitely didn't I definitely don't see it with Grand Blue Fantasy or the more or its follow up with um, Versus. I didn't see it with DNF Duel. I I didn't I you could argue it was in it was in Fighter Z, but fi, but Fighter Z felt more like in felt more like it was um eat, it was eating Capcom's lunch after after the um disappointment in the first impression with with MVC Infinite. Sure. But I don't I, that same that same kind of Push to simplicity. I just didn't see in um, in it in any of the other stuff. So so it makes me wonder if it's a if it's an if it was a Ishiwatari call. Well, I I might contest that. Um, DNF was pretty simple for me, and um, in Grand Blue too, a little like I don't know why would I play Grand Blue when I could play Street Fighter, and that's how I feel about Strive now. Like I don't know. Just, mm -hmm. um, but if you like the characters, I mean, Grand Blue has great characters. One thing, though, if somebody if somebody really wanted a a um beginner's entry to to these sorts of fighters, Strive is not the um is is not the entry that I would t that I would tell them to look into. Sure. There was one. There was one Doge. There was one. If you really want to see the insanity, there was the there was the um, there was one particular Dojin project which its name currently its name currently escapes me, un unfortunately, and that was another one person project. But I've always I've always pointed people in the direction of Fantasy Strike, and yeah, for a lot of people, it's going to be very simple. However. It's meant to be. It's meant to be a teaching tool. It is particularly designed around teaching people how to play, how to um, how how to get the finer details of um, two D fighters. Sure. As a, as opposed to the projects that just th that just throw you into the lab and and say, um, and say um, swim, damn it. Right. Um, also, I found I found the one I was looking for as far as that one person project. That was Hino Kakera, mm. which the which um the fact that, which all all those little sub mechanics that are that everybody complains about in Dojin Fighters, I'm looking at, I'm looking at that stuff and like hook that shit up to my veins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it too. But with with that said. When it comes, like, when it comes to the when it comes to the um, current project, current project you're working on, um, do you have do you have plans on put on putting out or or showcasing a vertical slice in the future? 
my biggest mistake on my last project was it, and it's a it's like rule number two you learn in game dev it's like you know play test early and play test often um so yeah i do i actually had plans way sooner but um i started a new contract with the company um so my life's been just kind of chaos um but yeah i hope to have a discord out asap um i don't know when that'll be um and my timeline's all left up. I did have a timeline, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. But yes, I want people to be playing it as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. I, I can get that. Well, with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Oh, sure. It was fun. Thanks. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to discuss that, that um, just... Um, do a, do a bit of theory crafting or any or even just a glorified shit post. The door is always open. So As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Okay, <laughs> I'm not much of a drinker, but and of course, <laughs> a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that comes from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!